Welcome to NYSE TV Live. I'm Allison Kosick. Today is Monday, March 18th, and the New York Stock Exchange is getting all glammed up. Elf Beauty, which trades right here on the exchange under the ticker symbol ELF, will ring the opening bell in about an hour, half an hour, as it celebrates its 20th birthday and 20 consecutive quarters of growth. The good vibes can't be contained just inside the walls of this iconic institution. Elf Beauty has given Experience Square a full makeover. The company will be handing out products and other swag. There's a makeup touch-up station, even a race car. That's right, driver Catherine Legg has arrived right here at the New York Stock Exchange in style, and attendees will have the opportunity to take photos with her car. It's right out front. One of the first things you may notice when seeing the Elf name are the periods that you see in between each letter, ELF. And that's not just a look. The company founded in, in 2004 says celebrating the beauty of every eye, lip, and face is fundamental to its DNA. Elf Beauty says it's on a mission to make the best of beauty accessible of uh, every eye, lip, face, and skin concern through its brands, Elf Cosmetics, Elf Skin, Keys Soul Care, Well People, and Naturium. Elf Beauty, which went public in 2016, trades on the New York Stock Exchange uh, under the ticker symbol ELF. One word the company is selling investors on? Growth. Elf Beauty says it has seen 20 straight quarters or five full years of net sales growth. Pretty amazing. During the third quarter of fiscal year 2024, which concluded at the end of December, Elf Beauty reported a net sales increase of 85% year over year. It attributed the surge to its strength in both its retail and e-commerce channels. But that's not all. It's the fourth consecutive quarter in which Elf has reported a net sales boost of at least 75% year over year. And the company has reported year over year net sales growth of at least 10% every quarter since its third fiscal quarter of 2021. No wonder it has so much to celebrate on its 20th birthday. According to Elf Beauty, the growth isn't over either. The company issuing new guidance or its best estimates to shareholders that says it expected to see between a 69 and 71 percent year over year increase in net sales compared to the 55 to 57 percent increase it had issued previously. One big component to ELF's strategy? Lower prices, that lower price point. During ELF's first quarter earnings call this past August, CEO Tarang Amin told investors that its average unit retails and its color cosmetics retail are retailing about $6 compared to the $9 for legacy brands and over $20 for prestige brands. It's got that lower price point. The company is also looking to score when it comes to advertising. Last year, Elf Beauty teamed up with actress Jennifer Coolidge for its first ever Super Bowl ad. It then raised the stakes during this past February's Super Bowl. Elf Beauty returned in force, teaming up with Judge Judy, or should I say Judge Beauty, for a primetime spot. Judge Beauty is back. Beauty fades. Dumb is forever. His boss was overspending on beauty. She is wasting company funds. $92 on foundation. I just want it to look glowy. That stuff isn't even cruelty free. <gasps> I find you guilty and sentence you to $14 glowy skin. Your Honor, in my humble opinion, that is more of a reward. In my humble opinion, you're a putz. Okay. Judge Beauty serves eyes, lips, facts. In Elf We Trust. Okay, I'm now going to toss it over to NYSE head of U.S. listings, Tara Zedzik, to continue today's coverage right from the boardroom. We're expected to hear from CEO Tarang Amin, uh, the CEO of, uh, e of Elf Beauty, um, and also other executives as well. Here we go to the boardroom. Let's go. That is elfing amazing. <laughs> Good morning, greetings, and welcome to the New York Stock Exchange. For those of you I didn't have the opportunity to meet personally, I'm Tara Jedjik. I head the U.S. listings here for the NYSE, and on behalf of our entire team, a huge warm welcome to the ELF team for 20 years of including, encouraging, and celebrating eyes, lips, and faces around the globe.
So it's not just about eyes, lips, and faces. It's about engaging your community. It's about responding to culture. It's about being inclusive and doing the right thing. Being honest and acting with integrity in your words and your actions. You give back, you do, you have initiatives where you're giving back to organizations and programs that are giving back to the communities. You're also innovating and changing. So adapting, but moving at elf speed while you do it with high, woo, high quality products, vegan, cruelty free, fair trade. I mean, you really embody what we're here to celebrate this morning and 20 years is pretty remarkable. We've had the privilege of being your partner for the last eight years and we really, really want to celebrate that today and this morning when you're all here. So, another thing, huge shout out, um, the way that the teams treat each other, but also embracing diversity throughout the organization, all the way to the highest seats of decision making. One of very few companies with two thirds women on your board. Woo! A third diverse members on the board. And teams around the world with 70% women and 40% diverse members, which is tremendous. We love that you walk the walk and don't just talk the talk. Our board is also comprised of 60% women, and we're pretty proud of that. So we really thank you for the partnership. We continue to learn from each other. And without further ado, I would like to bring up your passionate purpose-driven leader, your CEO, okay, Tarang Amin. Woo! Thank you, Tara, and the NYSC for that really warm welcome and hosting us today. Um, on behalf of the entire exec team, all of whom are here, and our board of directors, most of whom are here, I would like to also extend a warm welcome to each of you. You know, we were in this very room, this grand old room, uh, seven and a half years ago, right before our IPO. And I remember that day vividly, like it was yesterday. I remember the pride, the shamas, both Alan and Joey are here, in seeing their baby become a public company. I remember the joy our team felt after doing so much hard work to get the company ready to be public. And of course, I remember the epic celebration that night, having had a very successful IPO. And as great as that day was, though, I'm perhaps even more excited about today. We are celebrating our 20th anniversary as a company. But maybe even more importantly than the 20th anniversary is how the company continues to get stronger. If you look at just the last five years, our stock is appreciated 1,500%. making it the number one stock on the New York Stock Exchange. Out of the 1,615 companies listed during that time, we just completed our 20th consecutive quarter of net sales growth, averaging at least 20% growth per quarter, and we've more than doubled our market share. Now, as great as those results are, it's important to remember how we got them. I think we're all united in our mission to make the best of beauty accessible to every eye, lip, face, and skin concern. And our five strategic imperatives, the relentless focus this entire team has had on them. We have a unique marketing engine that knows how to engage and entertain our community. As a digitally native brand, we continue to power our digital ecosystem in everything we do. We lead innovation, taking inspiration from our community and the best of prestige and making that accessible to millions of consumers. We continue to drive productivity, being the most productive brand at our top customers, Target, Walmart, Ulta Beauty, Superdrug, and Boots. And of course, we deliver profitable growth with the best combination of cost, quality, and speed in our industry. So there's a lot to be proud of. Now, as much as I'm proud of the results, I'm even more excited about the future, what the next 20 years holds. We know that we have the opportunity to more than double our market share again in color cosmetics. And we know that because at Target, our longest standing national retailer, 
Not only are we the number one brand, but in the last four weeks, we represented 23% of their entire category sales. <laughs> Which is a pretty good indicator as others try to replicate their success. In skincare, which is bigger globally than even color cosmetics, we have three phenomenal brands in Elf Skin, Notorium, and Key Soul Care to pursue our ambitions. <laughs> One of the fastest parts, growing parts of our business is our international business, and in some respects, we're still getting started. So we have tremendous opportunity ahead of us, and I know that we can realize it. Now, as grateful as I am of the milestone of our results, I'm always most grateful for each of you, our entire ELF team. I couldn't be prouder of the work that you do to really help us, and, but more importantly than the work, the culture that we've collectively created. Our culture doesn't start from the top, it starts from each one of us, and that unique one team, one dream, high performance team culture continues to fuel our results, but also attracts like-minded partners. And we have a number of those partners here today, and we want to thank all of you, our entire ELF team, our entire ELF partners. We're so grateful for you. So let's continue to create a different kind of beauty company. Heck, a different kind of company, period. And have a great day, and let's go ring that bell. that seven and a half years ago, we got to have a ringside seat to watch you raise capital to grow and scale your business, to expand to new geographies and to create new services to literally change the world and improve the lives of global citizens. So thank you for that. I also have this medallion for you. We striped this medallion oh, for our bell ringers. On the front. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> On the front, we have the six pillars that you'll see in front of the facade, which is emblazoned with your beautiful, beautiful banner this morning. But we believe these pillars represent sustainability, transparency, opportunity, capital, innovation, and community. And we're tremendously proud that ELF is a part of our listed company community. Great. Now, everyone here will get a smaller version of Tarang's uh, medallion. We hope you slip this in your pocket and remember how much fun we're going to have today, but also the values that you represent every single day when you um, build teams and come to work. So for those watching virtually and on the broadcast, we are going to pass it back over to Allison because we are going to go down to the trading floor and open a $37 trillion market. Tara, what a great celebration there in the boardroom. Uh, that's Tara Zedzik, uh, the NYSE head of listings, and you also heard from ELF Beauty Chairman and CEO Tarang Amin. You know, a couple of takeaways I got from the boardroom, you know, just the way Tara introduced Tarang Amin, saying he's a passionate, purpose-driven CEO, and that really speaks to what the company is as well. And, and Amin really spoke to that, saying seven, uh, about seven and a half years ago, when the, when the company made its public debut right here at the New York Stock Exchange and went public, they remembered the joy that the team felt in bringing their baby uh, to become a public company. So today, what's happening here at the New York Stock Exchange is they're celebrating this 20th anniversary, this 20th birthday. As Amin says, the company just continues to get stronger, saying, the stock has appreciated 1,500%, making it the number one stock at the New York Stock Exchange. But Amin also says, he also likes to look back and remember how they got here. And, and there's a lot to be proud of, he said, that there's the unique marketing engine that ELF has, and we're going to get into that later in the show as well, uh, that they lead in innovation and they drive productivity, and it shows in where their products are, including Walmart, Ulta, and Boots. Uh, but the 
purpose-driven mantra of this company, I think, another, another meaningful part of it, I would say, is that the company is proud about its employee base and its corporate board. It reflects the diverse community that it has. Um, it's got a, a, you know, a, a big board with a lot of, with a, at least two-thirds women and one-third diverse board. Um, Elf is proud of this, and Elf also saying that it's, it's excited for the future, um, not just with cosmetics, but in skincare as well. I mean, also pointing to its international focus that uh, internationally, uh, ELF offers more opportunity this year. All right, earlier this year, the New York Stock Exchange kicked off its 2024 Happens Here campaign, giving companies a one-of-a-kind experience. Our Trinity Chavez uh, recently spoke to NYSC Head of Marketing, Sarah Murphy, about that. Check it out. It's so much more than just a place where people can come to raise capital. Mm -hmm. That is first and foremost our mission. But what we saw was that a lot of companies come in here to make other kinds of announcements. And then based on that, we saw increased demand from people outside the organization who didn't, who weren't at listed companies who wanted to come here anyway because it's a big stage that yeah. kind of magnifies their message. Yeah. So we wanted to take advantage of that and really showcase the amazing people and companies that come through the building. So amazing. that's how we got started. Well, tell me some uh, about some of the biggest goals that you're focused on for 2020. So really the goal is to raise awareness of exactly that. Like I think people look at the outside of the New York Stock Exchange. The facade is one of the most recognized icons um, in terms of buildings in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of curiosity about what goes on inside there. You know, we're not open to the public, so it's a special experience to come inside. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to do was show a little bit of what happens in here, out there. Yeah. And you know, we've gotten great response so far. So people really love seeing the excitement, to your point, yes. of what happens inside the building and we just wanted to make a bigger deal out of that. And what sort of social platforms have you been utilizing to really get the messaging out? So we're on all of our organic social platforms. So our amazing social media manager has been helping us with that. But we've also done some paid promotion on LinkedIn and on Instagram. And that's really where we're we're pushing to get that message out there to our target audience. And tell me about what the next phases are to growing this campaign. So we we started with a bang, right? <laughs> we wanted to be on big platforms. So yes. we did social as you and I just spoke about, but we also did a bunch of outdoor so we did really nice large outdoor placements in New York City mm -hmm. that are ongoing mm -hmm. but moving beyond that we're gonna work with some strategic media partners that I cannot yet name um, but you're but gonna come on NYSC TV live I to will, tell I'll be yes, back, you'll I'll make be the back to here. talk about that <laughs> but um, you know so we we've chosen a couple of partners that we really want to push that message out with so yes. we'll do things like newsletters and digital media and pre-roll so lots of different platforms um, we're gonna double down on social so yeah. we started there and we'll continue with that uh -huh. uh, and I'm super excited to see that come together. And you know, I have to say, as I'm talking to you, your face really lights up when you're talking about this campaign. Oh, and you thanks. can you can tell that you're really passionate yeah. about what you yeah. do. I mean, what excites you most, you know, about this role and what keeps you up at night? So I have been at the NYC for about four years. And I think what is exciting to me is the opportunity to come here every day and not know what kind of company I'm gonna work with. Yeah. So I can come in one day and I'm talking to an online retailer, I can come in the next day and I'm talking to a huge enterprise tech company and that really keeps you on your toes. So yeah. it's exciting, not unlike your job, right? Like you're gonna interview different people from <laughs> exactly. different companies yes. and it keeps it really interesting. Yeah. And I think that is really what keeps me coming in every day and staying excited about this role. Yeah. What keeps me up at night, <laughs> I mean, other than my dogs who are uh, relentless, um, I think it's really just thinking about my team. Yeah. How do I support them? How do I give them uh, the space that they need to be creative, to yeah. get their jobs done? You know, you mentioned 3,000 events a year. Yes. It's a really busy time at the yeah. exchange and, and, you know, my sort of reason for, for coming in is to help them really achieve their goals. Yeah. So that's kind of what can keep me up at night when it's when I feel like that's getting out of hand. And Tarang Amin right now is signing the Distinguished Guest Book. After he does that, he's going to make his way uh, through the New York Stock Exchange right up to the podium where he's going to be ringing the opening bell. We're going to be showing you play by play what that looks like live. Earlier this month, the New York Stock Exchange welcomed Forward Global to celebrate its annual Global Summit. Our Trinity Chavez caught up with some of the key figures in this. Take a look. So Forward Global has their annual event in different locations, right? Why was it important to have it at the NYSC? Business, philanthropists, the social impact sectors, we really are more powerful together. 
And the New York Stock Exchange understands this. The leadership here has been so supportive of what we are trying to do as a community. You're questioning what meaning you really have and are you making as big a difference as you could for the world? Um, and I came to that place after working in tech and being an entrepreneur and really decided that I wanted to see what it was like working more in the social space. So I got a job in the foundation side, so I was in charge of giving money to community organizations that were deserving and learned a lot about and was humbled a lot about the what work was happening around the world on the ground that you know you, you just don't understand until you see it firsthand. That's where I said I really want to work to, to mobilize more individuals and families who have resources to deploy them, to work together, to be part of a community. So tell me about that pivotal moment to where you decided, I want to make more of a difference in the world. I want to make an impact. This fund is a culmination, I think, of really the last 14 years of my involvement. I think part of what we've done at Forward Global is bring people from all different communities together who have a passion for making the world a better place and sort of connecting the dots in beautiful and magical ways. There's this dual relationship between the opportunity where, you know, when you do have a fair exchange of value and transparency and, you know, the opportunity for folks to, to benefit from what, you know, could be very powerful as it relates to capital, mm -hmm. uh, so much is possible. And joining me live now is the head of uh, social media here at the NYSE, Laura DiOrio, who best to talk about ELF but you. T uh, talk me through what's been happening here. Obviously, ELF going public in 2016, making its public debut. This is the first time it's been back. Yes. Talk me through what you're seeing. Well, I love ELF not only as a consumer, but also on social. They are the top when it comes to content and product. I'm actually donning a bit of ELF myself today. I see that. Thank you, a bit of a halo glow, a bit of a contour wand. I'm a big fan. So I basically grew up with Elf, so it's such an honor to be able to support them on social media today with a ton of opportunities. I actually visited Elf HQ a couple weeks ago in New York to make a bit of a, yeah, to bring them back to the New York Stock Exchange. So that video will be going live later today. Oh, I can't wait to see it. I know, I'm so excited to roll it out. It features footage from their IPO, but also of the amazing activation we have outside. And of course, I got to throw that bell ringing in there soon when I catch it. What is it about Elf's sort of way of of and its strategy on yeah. social media that really draws us in. You know what, those 20 consecutive quarters of growth are no joke because ELF is constantly following every trend, almost ahead of the trend, right? They are following generations upon generations of makeup lovers. My mom uses ELF as well as me, so it really encompasses this multi-generational aspect where I think ELF is really for everybody. And they follow that on social. I mean, they keep it up on TikTok, Instagram, X, LinkedIn, in everywhere. So wherever they are, I am. <laughs> yeah, I am definitely glued on social media to everything Elf is doing. Laura Diorio, yeah. thanks so much for all of your great insight. Totally, thank you. Elsa. All right, let's go to a quick word from the NYSE. And joining me now is JP Morgan analyst Andrea Teixeira. She covers household, beverage, and personal care products. So excited to talk with you about ELF because it really does, continuing the um, conversation I just had, it has such an impact on the consumer. Can you talk with me about these uh, consumer trends that we're seeing in the beauty industry? Absolutely. Uh, ELF comes in and it's in the intersection of these consumer trends, basically having all the, um, when you think about the consumer, and taking the consumer um, in all ages, in all consumer cohorts. ELF comes in in the intersection of that, affordable luxury, and first to market with products that are prestige, but in the same time, quality. Talk with me about skincare in particular, when it comes to the major trends that you're currently seeing, particularly with younger customers and older as well. 
Yeah, the consumer through COVID and even prior to COVID looked at wellness. And wellness is, is really where uh, you see energy drinks, you see cosmetics, and especially skincare. As we look to, to, to have these consumers graduating and even Jay-Z consumers coming into the category. Uh, women, men, it's really uh, democratic in the sense. And in particular for skincare, they're bringing in quality products at very affordable prices. Where do you see even more growth, skincare or cosmetics or just both? Both, but skincare definitely has more growth here because you can see more and more consumers of all ages affording to come to skincare and having these uh, dermal cosmetics in particular through the e.l.f. brands, Naturium in particular now, and even e.l.f. skin brands, as well as uh, Estee Lauder with uh, The Ordinary. Again, affordable entry-level points, recruiting more consumers, and then as they age, they will continue to the category. Tell us more about how ELF, do you think, is leveraging its platform through other mediums like social media and even gaming. How is that working? Yeah, it's the beginning of all of this. ELF has been really the precursor of all social media. They are social media native. They were always been a direct-to-consumer. They have four million uh, four and a half million beauty squad members, which tells you and talks to the, the power of the, uh, the brand, recruiting these consumers. And at the same time, they can um, make it so viral because basically it's their own consumer voting with the dollars because it's affordable and at the same time has good quality. How do you think ELF is adapting to industry changes that we're seeing in the direct-to-consumer chain? So they started with direct-to-consumer, and then with that, they were the very few brands, you can say that, that were able to graduate from direct-to-consumer into uh, large retailers. They were the first to come to Target uh, as a native, uh, digitally native uh, company. And from that, just now, they reached 23% market share in Target. And you can still see at Walmart and all these other retailers coming in, they will continue to grow. So both, they do both. It's amazing how they can do and work for both. Andrea Teixeira, thanks so much for your great analysis. Me. All right, let's go to let's go to a quick word from the NYSE. We are just a little over 60 seconds before that opening bell here at the New York Stock Exchange rings. Today's a special day. Elf Cosmetics uh, ringing the opening bell, doing the honors, of course. CEO and Chairman Tarek, Tariq Asim, uh, he uh, just spoke in the boardroom about what it's been like for Elf uh, from its days of before uh, becoming listed here on the uh, New York Stock Exchange and now as a listed company, one of the top listed companies here at the New York Stock Exchange. Tariq Amin uh, speaking about how uh, the joy of, of what the employees and the executives felt seven and a half years ago, 2016, when Elf Cosmetics uh, had its public debut uh, here at the New York Stock Exchange, and how the company just hasn't forgotten about all the hard work that it's done to get here at the New York Stock Exchange. So taking a look at the bell, uh, we're getting ready for Tariq Asim to uh, ring that opening bell. Outside right now uh, is a on Experience Square is a huge array of fun things to do. You can get your makeup done, grab a sweatshirt, have a coffee. Uh, Elf Cosmetics really celebrating in Elfing style uh, its 20th birthday, really doing it up in style. If you have a chance, come on down here to the New York Stock Exchange and join in some of the fun. All right, to the bell, let's go.
happy anniversary, 20th birthday to Elf Cosmetics. They are ringing the opening bell here at the New York Stock Exchange. Joining me now is the Einstein of Wall Street, Peter Tuckman. So excited to have you with us today. Hi, Let, let's talk about the Fed two days away from uh, its, its meeting. What do you see happening? So look, I think we were coming into this. We had had nothing but sort of positive inflation uh, commentary up until recently. In the last three weeks, we've seen three different indicators come out that are pointing to a little hotter inflation number. We are now looking at a probability of three 25 basis point cuts in 2024, down from six. Okay, so what do you think, the, is this what the expectation is or how do you see the market well, no, reaction? What they're, look, it, it's all about expectation. Markets don't like to be given expectations and then under delivered. Right now, up until this point, we've seen the, the, the market has responded quite favorably to everything that's going on. We're still trading at record highs, although over the last number of weeks, PPI, CPI, numbers that came out were a little bit hot. It's look, people can't expect that the Fed's monetary policy is going to immediately have the effect it's going to. I mean, people need to be a little bit patient. We may have to sit a little bit longer with interest rates the way they are until we get things to settle down. But is this what, so this isn't what the market is expecting, so what could we expect no, right, in the trade? Right, right, right now, it's all about the probability, right? We don't know what the Fed is going to do, but the numbers that have come out that are a little bit hotter than usual are now making the probability look like three cuts in 2024. Is that what we're going to hear from him this week? Very possibly. You never know, right? You're going to see, obviously, we're not getting a number this uh, uh, Wednesday, but we are going to get some level of expectations what the probability is. Right now, markets are pricing in three cuts as opposed down from six, which is quite substantial change. And this, of course, coming in because, or your analysis coming in because inflation came in hotter than expected. Right. Uh, nothing but really good numbers. But you have to realize that the, look, we, we the, the markets can't respond as quickly as people's expectations are. Over the last couple of weeks, we had a PPI, a CPE, and a, a number of other numbers that were a little hotter than expected. And so, the look, Federal, the Fed's decision making is economic data driven, and when the data, that's what I like about them, that they are, they will, they are, um, uh, they will adapt to the numbers as necessary. And if the number's a little hotter, they're going to adjust their number. And clearly, uh, they immediately did by cutting it from th six to three. Okay, obviously the Fed is the biggest story this week, but what else do you think investors are going to be looking at this week? You know what? I think everybody's going to be looking at the Reddit IPO. We're here celebrating ELF's IPO, and they're, they're uh, coming to the public markets here, and they've done really well. That whole sector, the beauty sector, is an extraordinary one. I think it's great because it celebrates women in a big way, especially companies that are founded by women here on the floor. Obviously, the next big deal is going to be Reddit and how the IPO market is going to respond to that right now as i read this morning it's oversubscribed five or six times already 77 million daily users it's a hot number it's a hot topic and we're super excited to get listings the whole landscape of the I ipo market we need it to be robust in 2024 and so far i think this will be a good gateway into that level ultimately how do you see the ipo market for 2024 you know what i look i'm 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 um I'm hopeful that it will be better. You really never know. In an economy that seems okay, in a market that seems strong, I think we're going to start seeing companies come to public. When the landscape is a bit skittish, companies are a little apprehensive about coming to market. But right now, with the market trading at record highs, hopefully a new hot number coming out with the Reddit numbers, I'm, 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 I'm very positive about the year. All right, Einstein, so great talking with you. Thanks for your analysis. Oh, all right, we're about to go outside and experience Experience Square with Elf Cosmetics. Uh, but first, our Judy Shaw caught up with some wonderful uh, women in the beauty industry. Listen to this. Boss Beauties, um, I started it in 2021. We started in the Web3 space um, with a collection of digital collectibles. Um, we had success there where our digital collectibles went viral. But it wasn't about that. It was really about starting this company that could impact the next generation of women and girls. Um, so that's really what's at the heart of Boss Beauties. And today is our book launch, um, Boss Beauty, inspiration to be everything you want. Um, you know, we featured some of our mentors in the book with their wisdom and their advice. And it's really, really special to me to share their wisdom with the world. Um, starting in Web3 in that digital space in emerging tech 
and now bringing that mission out through a physical book, which can be in the hands of women and girls all over the world, is really, really special to me. Now, Dehavia, let's talk about Serena Ventures. Talk to me about the mission and what drove you to partner with Boss Beauties. Yes, um, so Serena Ventures is an early stage venture firm founded by Serena Williams. The overarching thesis is to invest into solutions that impact the everyday lives of everyday people. One of our core thesis areas is um, financial equity. Um, and we invested into Boss Beauties and Lisa's company about two years ago, and it touches on a, a few things. One is the financial equity piece. When the company was launched, it was helping increase access to alternative assets for um, minor women and minorities. Um, and then also something that's also very important to us is founder market fit. Um, and we were just chatting earlier and um, Lisa was mentioning how like this is just a huge problem that I think it's your life's work. Um, and that's something that's very important to us also. Mm -hmm. Now, Judy, we're also here today highlighting the Breakthrough Tech Sprinternship. It's a project that you have. Um, so talk to me about it. Talk to me about the project and how it's bridging the gender gap in tech. Yeah, so we've had a diversity challenge in tech for a very long time. Uh, there's a fierce urgency of now with the explosion of AI. Uh, there are a lot of reasonable concerns about ethics and fairness and bias in algorithms. And uh, we can worry about governance and policy, but our first line of defense against those concerns is not the what and the how, but the who. Who's in the room, who's at the table, who's making the important decisions. And that's what Breakthrough Tech is all about. We run the largest AI program in the country focused on uh, launching a diverse group of tech talent. Uh, and we do it uh, by democratizing access to opportunity. The Sprint Internship Program, a micro internship program that gets these students who go to universities that are off the radar of many industry recruiters and we give them access to something like a micro internship, which our partner Boss Beauties has been hosting. And you get that resume juice on their resumes. And it's incredible what happens. 80% uh, of our students land summer internships and jobs, which is the key to them uh, landing jobs when they graduate. So uh, it's an incredible opportunity. We just level the playing field and the students do the rest. And there you have it, looking at a live shot of the exterior of the New York Stock Exchange celebrating Elf Beauty, its 20th anniversary today. Right now I'm with Neil Vogel, he's the CEO of Dot Dash. Meredith, so excited to have you on the show today, welcome. I uh, thank you, I'm thrilled to be here, I'm thrilled to support Elf. Uh, can you walk us through Elf's disruptive strategy that it has? Sure, what I would say is the, the thing to understand about Elf and their marketing is they're truly special and it's special how they build community. And there are very few businesses in the world that can be equally as good on social media as they are at the Super Bowl. And if you can pull that off in today's media market, you're gonna get really special results. And a lot of media people want to win awards, want to do incredible creative. These guys print results and 20 quarters in a row of growth kind of speaks for itself. Talk me through some of the standouts. So the, the amazing work they do, so we're People Magazine and Entertainment Weekly and Birdie and Brides and all these things. The amazing work they do that embraces both like the community on social media and they can translate it into something big like Jennifer Coolidge is just so incredible and inspiring and uh, the diversity that they show and exhibit, it's just really amazing. They're doing an incredible job. What kind of adjustments are you seeing that companies have to make these days? Uh, because social media is really becoming ubiquitous, isn't it? Yeah, so social is ubiquitous. I think the only skill set you can have as a company like Elf or like Dot Dash Meredith is flexibility and understanding the world's going to change and loving that change and embracing that change. And your organization needs to be energized by that change. And if you look at their marketing and look at what they did three years ago versus what they do now, you can see that they live that change. And that's why they build community. That's why the customers love them. That's why it's going global. It, it all makes a lot of sense. And some, some companies do it right and some companies don't do it right. What's, the, what's really the trick here? I mean, I don't want to tell you who doesn't do it right. I think, <laughs> I think what, what, what does do it right is really understanding your audience. And I think if, if you talk to Corey, their CMO, or any of their team, they always talk about building community and understanding who is using the products. And in a modern world where social media is super prevalent and really important, and where populations and customers are much more diverse than ever, they've really built an incredible community and it resonates. And again, you can see it in the results. There's a reason why they're growing like they're growing. 
talk me through some of the trends you're seeing with Elf's uh, consumer base, and how do you think the company is finding ways, you know, to continue connecting with them? So I think it's interesting when when you start looking at trends in the markets in which they serve, they serve a whole bunch of different markets. And there's two trends. There's trends in what people want, and that's authenticity and representation and seeing themselves in the products. And then there's trends in media. And certain of your customers are going to read print magazines, and certain of your customers are going to be on TikTok, and certain are going to be on the internet, and certain are going to want to watch the Super Bowl. No group is more valuable than another group, but you have to reach all of them, and you have to identify with all of them, and that's what they're really good at. And social media really is king. Social media is king. I mean, social media is king, um, if not for the reach, but for being in the zeitgeist. And you have to be in social, you have to resonate in social. And again, social, the thing that works on social when you're a media company like us, is you have to be authentic. And these guys are authentic. And it, I don't know any other way to say it is, the universe can smell bullshit, and these guys are so real and legit, it's why it's all clicking. Uh, such a pleasure getting your expertise, Neil. Thanks Thank for your you. time. Thank you. And speaking of another way to reach consumers, commercials, yeah, on TV. I want you to take a look at Elf's Judge Judy commercial that aired during the Super Bowl. This is a funny one. Watch this. All rise. Judge Beauty is back. Beauty fades. Dumb is forever. His boss was overspending on beauty. She is wasting company funds on overpriced makeup. Good makeup is expensive. Oh, pricey makeup is a scam, like couples therapy or boundaries. Ooh, I object to his whole vibe. You're telling me you need to spend $92 on foundation? Don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. I confess. I just want it to look gooey. Radiant. Luminous. Glowy. Elf and hot. Oh, but this stuff costs a fortune and it isn't even cruelty free. I know. I'm not proud of it. Gasp. I find you guilty of reckless spending and sentence you to $14 glowy skin. Okay, just wait. Stop. So what do I get? Sorry, no makeup can cover up irritating. Well, that's okay, I don't mind being irritating. Judge Beauty serves eyes, lips, facts. In Elf we trust. Can we walk outside? And we are back here outside the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, I'm with uh, Tara Jedzik. She's the head of U.S. listings right here at the New York Stock Exchange. So glad you can join us this morning. Thank you. Talk us through how the exchange is so great at creating these memorable experiences like this for listed companies. Absolutely. So it's not just when a company debuts on the NYSE. I mean, you only get one birthday, but it's big milestones, like a 20th anniversary of founding. We, bring, we have no greater joy than bringing visibility to these milestones, key initiatives, product launches. So today, 20 years, ALF was founded 20 years ago, been listed for seven and a half years. And, you know, we really like leveraging our platform and Experience Square to amplify the messages that the companies have. Can you talk me through, maybe walk us through what we're seeing? We're, we're seeing the back part of it, but maybe talk, me, talk us through what we're seeing. Sure. So this is an amazing activation this morning. So ELF is tremendous at listening to their community, their customers, to really tap culture and figure out what is resonating out in the market. What better place than to test it live, real time on Wall Street? So what are we what are we seeing here? So we have back end, but we have the back. Yes, we have uh, the oil change station where products and we have uh, literally makeup artists here who are doing live makeup artistry and amplifying, enhancing, including and celebrating the eyes, lips, and face of this crowd out here in front of 11 Wall. It's a big party too. We've got a DJ here. Uh, and Come on, the, Allison. The lip, the, Break it down. the lip oil is really, uh, it's full size here, which is crazy. Yes. I know. I'm about to go get a lip oil change. I'm feeling a little dry. I know I'm going to feel much more rejuvenated and energized after this. Oh, Tara, it's such a joy talking with you. Thanks for walking us through what we're seeing here at Experience Square and celebrating the 20th anniversary of one of your top listings, Elf Cosmetics. Thanks so much. Thanks, Allison. All right, that's going to do it for NYSC TV Live. Tune in later today when we're going to take our coverage to Las Vegas, where Trinity is, uh, to cover the closing bell at Ice Experience. I'm Allison Kosick. It's been so fun. Have a great day. Iconic brands speak for themselves. The strongest brands stand the test of time.
We are so excited to welcome you to our community. Today is all about you. We've never lost sight of what we're trying to do and deliver that mission. Going through this experience with my partners and my family has been unbelievable. We imagined something that didn't exist yet, and we believed that we could do it. You're going to look back on this accomplishment as one of the finest you've ever done. I want you to know that the best is yet to come. In just a few minutes, we'll go downstairs to the legendary New York Stock Exchange trading floor to ring the opening bell. The history here, the tradition, it's just incredible for us to be at this moment.